So, Omid, tell me about your laundrette. My what? Oh, the laundrette, yeah. It's my friend's. So I'm come, I come here to help him out so he could go home, go home and spend more time with family. The atmosphere is extremely important. If the customer comes and they just see from outside some ugliness, they just don't want to walk in. <laughs> Visually, it needs to be open. You know, the feng shui, that kind of thing, you know? Open, then they come in, invited. And that's why I leave the doors open to these things, airing out, but also it's inviting. Hello. Hello. Evening. Come on inside. Are you paying cash or charge? Yeah, cash. Please. Cash. Okay, good. Hi. Are you washing? Yeah. Okay. Please. Omid, when you were eight years old, yeah. something happened to you. What was it? <laughs> Someone gave me a calendar. It was a calendar of a company that was advertising cars and uh, scantily dressed, dressed women on the cars. <laughs> it made me want to interact with it. No problem, yes, yes. No problem. I was this, uh, this kid who, who liked, uh, liked God and religion and, you know, this stuff about life. And so I would go into this, uh, oh, I'm sorry, God, yeah, I'm not supposed to be doing this, you know? <laughs> and then going back to it again, because it's out of my control. <laughs> Thank you very much. When the satisfaction is over, the mind is released from this garbage. It doesn't exist for you. And that was puzzling to me. How is it that one second, one is interested in sexually in a person quite strongly, intensely, next minute, it, 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 it's as if it doesn't exist. I was battling within myself against it. So my sexual fixation continued for years, of course. Well, so what is the issue for you with lust? Because actually, you know, a lot of people would say, well, it's perfectly natural, it's perfectly normal to be aroused by a woman. I'm just interested in anything that's unusual or anything that's unexplained. Last thing is outside controlling you, not you being yourself, not you consciously making a decision. Hey, do I like this person? Do I know their personality? Do I want to be involved in, with them? And a whole bunch of highly manipulative information has brought us up to think of women in a certain way that actually destroys relationships. When a person has no tools, they can't really um, even venture to try to solve a problem. I realized that I could help the world. So every time I had a sexual thought at work, I had my paper and pencil in my right pocket. I would take it out and write it down. I would put these pieces of paper on top of each other, piles of it. At that moment, I was solely focused on, hey, if I became sexually aroused, I wanted to figure out what the heck's going on. I thought of it as also writing a book for others, because it's a massive problem, and, you know, it messes people's lives up really bad. Did it mess your life up? Sure, of course. You are for years, distracted. Oh. OK. All right. Omid, can you tell me about your first period of homelessness? First period? Oh, yeah, my mom passed away. My mom was a, a bit in debt, so we had to sell the house. And so I became homeless immediately, 2001. Years and years and years. <laughs> I was working at the time in an alternative health center. <laughs> and then uh, this, this guy came to purchase something. And it uh, turns out he was a robber. But he takes out the gun. He's empty your pockets, I empty my pockets. That's all I had. <laughs> then I was waiting for him to shoot me. <laughs> I said, oh, man, I could have been dead right there. And my book, which is almost done, would not get out. You know, so I said, oh, man, I better get this book out as quickly as possible. <laughs> and I better get this information out to the people. It didn't make a difference to me if I had a home or not. Just to be a genuine person, that, that's good. 
Here I was homeless, while the solution to many people who have mansions, 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 but they have to have the sexual problem, you know? And so I went and scrambled and got everything together, you know, do everything and get it out. And I was talking in, in touch with my publisher in the US. They were saying, you can publish your book. So I signed up with them. That was 2009, got it out. Whoops. 250 pages about how to overcome a sexual fixation. Do you talk about this stuff with your customers as well? I talk about this stuff with some of the customers. <laughs> <laughs>